Okay, we, we're going to see how we can extend our maximal margin classifier now to deal with situations where you cannot separate the data well. So we'll start off um, in the case where the data um, aren't separable at all, as we see in this picture over here. Okay, well, all good and well. What happens if the data aren't separable? I mean, it's a little bit wishful thinking that, that we can always separate the data perfectly with a hyperplane. So here's a similar picture to what we had before. And in this case, the data aren't separable. You'll see you cannot fit a hyperplane through these data and exactly separate them. You can try as much as you like, but, you know, there's maybe an attempt, but no. You always, you can just, it's obvious you're always going to get, you're always going to get overlap. And, and this is often the case, especially if the number um, of points is large relative to the dimensions. On the other hand, for a lot of wide data, like in genomics and other kinds of problems, um, the number of sample points is less than the dimensions. And in general, when the number of sample points is less than dim the dimensions, you can always separate the data with a hyperplane. Okay, so, but, but when, when n is much bigger than p, typically not. So that's a problem we need to deal with. Another problem we're going to want to deal with is when you have noisy data. And so I alluded to that earlier. Um, so here we've got our original data, and it's not too noisy, and we get a, a hyperplane over there. What happens if we add one more point, blue point, here it is over here, and now we still want to separate in hyperplane? Well, just the presence of that one extra point means we've had to tilt the hyperplane quite dramatically to still get separation. So that's a little bit of crazy behavior, we'd say non-robust behavior, to the addition of one extra point. This point might be an outlier and it's going to have a dramatic effect on the, on the, on the maximal margin classifier. So we want to be able to deal with those, both of these problems. The, uh, what we call a support vector classifier um, is going to do that and it maximizes what we call a soft margin. So we're going to relax the idea of, of a separate in hyperplane. Okay, so here's the idea. We've got two pictures here. Both of them have soft margins. In the left picture, the data actually are separable, but we've made the margin wider than we need to. And so we've got two points who are on the wrong side of their margins. Amongst the blue guys, this point here, number eight, is on the wrong side of the margin. This one. Right? And amongst the, the pink guys, this guy's on the wrong side of the margin. But by getting the, the margin wider, um, we've had to put up with those two, um, those two so-called errors, and so we call this a soft margin. And the idea is that making the soft margin wider or, or smaller um, is, a, is a way of, of, of kind of regularizing, because once you allow some points to be on the wrong side of the margin, the margin gets determined by more than just the closest points. In the right plot, it's essential to have a soft margin because we cannot get a separate in hyperplane. And so here we have a candidate um, hyperplane with its margins, and we see that there are several um, points on the wrong side. We've got a, a blue point on the wrong side of its margin over here. We've got a blue point on the wrong side of the decision boundary and on the wrong side of the margin. Likewise, there's a, a MOVE point on the wrong side of, of, of the decision boundary, also the wrong side of the margin. So these are called soft margins. And we need to modify the, the formulation of the problem to accommodate it. So the part of the problem is the same. We're going to maximize n subject to the beta's summing squares 1, so that's a unit vector. Now we want all the points, the distance of all the points, to be bigger than m, but discounted by a discount factor, 1 minus epsilon i. So we allow some slack. Some points needn't be exactly bigger than the margin, but there can be some slack. And how do we account for all the slack? We give ourselves a budget. We give ourselves a budget for the total amount of slack, which in this case is C. So the epsilons tell us how much each point is allowed to be on the wrong side of its margin. It's a relative amount relative to the margin. And we give ourselves a, a number C, a total amount of overlap. 
And then subject to that, we're going to make the margin as, as wide as possible um, to get on either side of the margin. Okay, again, convex optimization problem um, we can solve using the SVM package in R. C is now a tuning parameter, and as we change C, the soft margin is going to get wider or smaller. So, as I said, it's a regularization parameter, and so here we've got four scenarios where we've changed C. Here's the biggest C, and in fact it's the biggest a, a, a possible C that, that's needed because now all points are on the wrong side of the margin. Okay? And, and so there's an epsilon for every single point. Um, so these epsilons you can think of as, let's do it in this picture over here, you can draw arrows which, which tells you the distance of each point from the margin. Okay, so there's one for this guy. And the length of these is proportional to, to, to the epsilons, and likewise for these guys. Okay, And as we tighten C, the margin gets tighter because we're allowing less and less overlap, um, and so that becomes a tuning parameter. We'll see a little bit later that, in effect, the number of points that are on the wrong side of the margin, in other words, all the points inside the margin, or on the wrong side of the margin, become the effective points that are controlling the orientation of the margin. So in some sense, the more points that are involved in the orientation of the margin, the more stable it becomes. And that means as C gets bigger, the more stable the margin becomes. And so there's going to be a kind of a, a bias variance trade-off as we change C. So right. it's really Sorry. a regularization parameter. Rob? I, well, I just had a question, actually. I, yeah. thinking, I mean, all, we're taking the, the Euclidean distance in all these pictures. Does it matter if I standardize the variables first? Should I standardize the variables first? Oh, that's a good point. Yes. You know, I think, I think you, you're right, Rob. Um, the, the, the support vector machine treats all the variables as equals in a way, and so the units count. So mm -hmm. good point. The variables should be standardized. If you remember when we did the lasso and ridge regression, we said that was important there too. Well, the same, for the same reasons it's important here. Well, so we've come up with a, a compromise when, when the points overlap, but in some cases, no matter how much we try, that compromise isn't going to help. And so here's, a, here's a, a fake situation, but it's a situation where having a soft margin doesn't help. You can see we've got a the MOVE set of points is exactly in the middle of a, a crowd of blues on one side and another crowd of blues on the other side. And no matter what we do, we, we'll, we won't get a good classifier. What we'd like to do is bend the margin, and we're going to talk about ways of how we do that in, in the next segment.